was the place where Thomas Young lived. Now, Thomas Young was mentioned by Fairfax on July the 2nd when they met at Dorchester, and he would like to know more of this Thomas Young, the great great orit, orita? orator. Orator at Babby Ring. So, um, we're going to park up in Manston and have a little chat about Thomas Young because uh, we do know quite a bit about Thomas Young. So, uh, when we get, we'll stop at Manston and we'll, and we'll have a little chat about him. Are you going over the, over the road? I am. Oh, okay. Okay. What's in that field? Nothing. Oh, okay. We go. It's an interesting place to stop because you can see. Let me get this right. Hamilton Hill that way. You can see all the three hills, can't you? Yeah, you can. Yeah, but you my point in the right way is that Hamilton Hill that way. Yeah, you see that way. Yeah, that's it. Hamilton Hill behind me, then Clubman Down. down. And then yeah. Duncliffe Wood. Wood. You can see them all from here. So this is why we're going to go to a spot over here, and I think from that spot, if I remember rightly, because I have been here before, we can see all three main spots where the club men gathered. Okay. So, uh, let's go. Okay, let's go have a look. Okay. Start speaking whenever you're ready. Right, we're here in Manston. Are you filming it? Yeah. Right, we're here in Manston, and it's uh, this is a really exciting spot for me. <laughs> <laughs> because from That's this spot, spot, you can see Duncliffe Wood. So, pointing over there. That's it. That's Duncliffe Wood. Come back That's... to me. Club Bend Down. Yep. And over here is Hamwoodin Hill. I know. It's so great. everything is in walking distance from Manston. Now Manston was the hometown of uh, Thomas Young. And Thomas Young is central to all the club men's stories in Dorset because he was at all the meetings really and did all the legal documentation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read from my notes about Thomas Young because I've, I've, I've done a lot of research on Tom and Young, Thomas Young and there's a lot of stuff to remember and, I, and, I, and my memory is not that great and it's starting to rain and I want to get through it. So it starts off with speaking of the ringleaders of Clubman at a meeting with General Thomas Fairfax in Dorchester on the 3rd of July 1645. Rushworth says a great deputation to him was led by men of good name. It contained a Trenchard and a Hollis. John St. Lowe, Peter Hopkins Esquire, Master Robert J. Avlett, and Master Thomas Young. An attorney, a man more elegant than trustworthy, and like he said, I should like to know more of Master Young, the great orator of Badbury. And then it goes down after this, it goes down to Thomas Young of Manston Dorset, also going by the name of Theo Young, because they spelt their names many times in different ways then, was present throughout the club and risings in Dorset. Yet his record has it to history. It is his involvement in the wording and making of the petitions brought forward by the clubmen in 1645, the desires and resolutions in May, which we know more of the most of Thomas Young, and also the humble petition of the inhabitants of the county of Dorset from, from July the 8th. So, where I'm going to go after this is where Thomas Young originated from. So, I've done some research looking back to the early records of the Star Chamber, because he's mentioned from the Star Chamber in Shaftesbury at the arrest, and he says, it says, I think it's Rushworth does it, or it might be Sprig, but it says, him of the old Star Chamber. So, if I go back to that documentation, if I can find it, because we have to go quite a way back with this one. <laughs> I've gone back, this, I found my notes where I wrote on this, because I can't remember it all, but, it says here, this is what I've written, it's, it's, the taking of the club and leaders at Shaftesbury on August the 3rd gives us a clue into Young's past. On the list of names, Thomas Young has a note against him, Theo Young of Manston of the Old Star Chamber. Now, taking it as where Young spent time in his early years, as of note, there was a Thomas Young as a student in law at Staple Inn in 1617. Uh, I don't know if this is our Thomas Young, but the Thomas Young from there did go on to work at the Star Chamber, so... It, it, it probably is, you know. But he was in the Star Chamber, and he was actually in the Star Chamber for the King's Causes, domestic. 
This also has to be looked at with an air of caution as later on there's another Thomas Young of the Old Star Chamber in Charles II of the King's Commission. So this is our Thomas Young or not our Thomas Young, I'm not too sure. Uh, now Thomas, Thomas Young at this time was living in St. Martin's in the field and is on the marriage register dated the 24th of October 1632. Recorded here as a bachelor of 27 in, where he marries a Catherine Sheldon, a spinster of age of about 29. So this puts Thomas Young's birth date at about 1605. But the, but Sheldon's, Catherine Sheldon is the connection with Manston because Thomas Young then moved into Dorset and lived in Manston because Sheldon's were well, a big name in Manston. They, they seem to have plenty of money and live in a big house down here. So, uh, that's the connection with Thomas Young arriving in Manston, I believe. Now from there, Thomas Young appears in the name again in 1635 on a covenant to stand seized. Here with a Catherine Young, a birth name Sheldon. Young is by now, as said, married to Catherine Sheldon, the daughter of Elizabeth Sheldon. And on this document, he was described as a gent from London. So this has got to be our Thomas Young. Right, well, I'm just going to say a few things about Thomas Young um, with little snippets of stories in between the events in Dorset in 1645 when Fairfax was here because there's on record as uh, William Waller, the, the, the parliamentarian general guy, sending in a party of horse to get Thomas Young. So he must have been a man of note for William Waller to, to concentrate on him. But it seems that ambush to get Thomas Young was, was stopped by a man called Rob Reeves who, who, who threatened to pistol whip somebody who didn't join his men to go and stop William Waller's men coming in to get Robert uh, Thomas Young. So that's one small story about Thomas Young which is in the, the calendar of advanced money from 1642 to 1656 but there's another little story about Thomas Young which I should have kept in my hand which starts in Mir, because it seems he was in Mir as well doing a, doing a speech on a bit, place called Beacon Hill there. And as he was speaking, he finished his speech to a gathering of a lot of men and Rob Elvesbury, the Reverend from Branstone, is it Brianstone? Brianstone, that's Brianstone. it. Brianstone. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Just grabbed whatever Thomas Young was reading and, and just started shouting out, you know, let's read from the prayer book, read from the prayer book. So we know Thomas Young was in Mere as well to a big gathering of people. So, uh, so he was an important man at this time. So how far away is Mere? That's just north of Shaftesbury, I think, isn't it? It is. So that would only be, maybe what, about 10 miles away or something? It's not Yeah, about way. 10 miles. Yes, I yeah. mean, these people walk miles. Yeah, yeah. That's what I find so, remarkable, yeah, is yeah. how far people travelled, really. Yeah. And Badbury rings from here is just... Well, it's all, it's it's all walking not distance, far, isn't is it? it? You can walk toward these hills from here. It's all on the old Roman roads from here, which we've, we've found all, the, yes. links, all these places together. Yes, So yes. just great bodies of men were meeting at all these places just to talk about... Uh, the Royalists and Parliamentarians armies uh, effects on the people in, in the county here. Mm. Now later on at, at the end with the Standing Committee there's the Committee of Minutes later on uh, at the end of the Civil War and it mentions Thomas Young again and it's, it brings up two references to Thomas Young uh, being of delinquent which means he was with the, you know sort of like not on the Parliamentarians cause but all these charges were dropped so mm. he was obviously well connected yes. and still well connected through yes. through through people so cuz and that's where Thomas Young just disappears from history cuz we know he's still in Manston and there's a really weird sequence where Elizabeth Sheldon dies and her mother dies the day before he, um, Elizabeth Sheldon and they, so that's that's kind of weird in itself and so but I'm not going to investigate that because that's another that lovely vantage point over there and we're just in front of Hamilton Hill here, but I wanted to stop here just to remind people about the uh, Club Men 1645 site where you can read all about Thomas Young on the blog. And I wanted to stop here also because there's a manor house over here to our left, which maybe the Sheldons and Thomas Young lived in because it's quite an old house, it's a big house, it's the biggest house in Manston, and he was very well connected. So. 
I believe he would have lived there, but it's privately owned now and you can't get near it. But what we're going to do is uh, have a look around the church and have a look at some of the graves because um, in the death records it does say uh, it does say Thomas Young is buried in Manston. So this is the church. We'll head that way and we'll see what we can find. Come on. Have you tried the door? No, I'm going to. Let's have a look. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Well, we've been filming at Manston today about Thomas Young. But we've just popped up to Hod Hill here because I want to show you some of the views. Now over to my left, your right over here, is the back of Hamwardon Hill. Now come back a bit this way towards me and in the far distance that way is Clubmen Down. That's right. Yep. yep. And back towards me and this is Hod Hill, which I've mentioned, and it's just wonderful. It's a hill fort. It is, but we've got a um, helicopter. We've got a helicopter flying around today, so it sort of spoiled the mood a little bit. But <laughs> there you go. The sheep don't seem bothered. The sheep don't bother. 